2020, Mentor Channel. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. In this presentation, I propose to uh, talk about the role of the technical pilot. Um, we know that some of you have already technical pilots in their organization. We ho also know that some of you are already technical pilots. I recognize some of you. And that uh, we recently developed a course uh, to talk about this role. So we believed it was a good opportunity to uh, have a look together on what could be this role and to help you at the end to develop this function if you have already technical pilots or to install this function in your organization. So first of all, uh, the technical pilot, before I start the slides, there is no regulation for this role. So there is no mandatory text that uh, says, okay, you have to have a technical pilot in your organization. So it's more a concept. If you have a look on different documents, locations, if you have a look on the internet, for example, you will find a course made by a, a third company. And uh, this course introduces some philosophy procedure Theory, theory of acceptance, maintenance, production flight test, a review of soft technical aspects. So it's a description of what could be a technical pilot. You, if you have a look on the internet also, you can read some uh, testimonial regarding a technical pilot. And he's, in, he's supporting the fleet manager. He updates the flight ops documentation. He liaises with arbors and discuss with authorities and do acceptance flights. So it's a bit different. And us in arbors, uh, we recommend for a long time uh, that you put in place this function in your organization to help the, tech the chief pilot and to uh, analyze the procedures, the documentation, and ensure the link with arbors. You can see that the goal is, a, I would say, quite the same, but the mission is a bit different. So here, I propose to share our vision, the Abyss vision of what is the role of the technical pilot. So in, in the first part, I will review the need, why it's important to have a technical pilot. In the second part, I will go to the main activities of this function. After, we'll have a testimonial from uh, Captain Holleg, who is, who is a technical pilot. And we'll finish by a concrete example, because at the end, examples are better than the, the theory. <coughs> so the need. Why a technical pilot? <coughs> I will not uh, learn you how you are organized, but if you, make a just, uh, if you take a picture of your organization, in your uh, airline, you have the flight crew community, the management, you have all the guys in charge of safety, you have the training uh, managers, you have the guy in charge of managing the documentation and other technical aspects, the flight operations engineering, the maintenance and engineering. So the idea is to know how to ease this, the interaction between the domains. We know that sometimes you can have some difficulties of communication between these different domains and it could create some problems uh, when you have an issue and we have to, you have to be quick to solve something. <clears throat> so the idea and the need for a technical pilot is to try to ease this interaction. Of course, when we say technical pilot, you have the technical aspects. So for us, a technical pilot should have a strong expertise in different domains, for sure. He should be able to deal with a number of subjects, a big number of subjects sometimes. And one very important point, he has to be recognized by the others by the other members of the other domains, and the skills should be known. This is a p the technical part, but what is very important this is communication. To know a lot of things is very important, but to communicate it is more. So why? It's because if you are a technical pilot, you will be the link with different domains, all the domains that we showed, ju we showed just after. You are also the link, probably the link with the authorities. 
and you are the link with the manufacturer. So you are clearly uh, the communicant of your airline when you have a subject dealing with different domains. So <coughs> even if in the title technical pilot you have technical, we believe that this is a communication that is the main role of the technical pilot. <coughs> For example, if you take an organization of uh, an airline, uh, you will see that the technical pilot is somewhere here, for example, is located here. So is part of flight operations and you have one technical pilot par, uh, per fleet. It could be different in other organization. And that means that the position of the technical pilot in hierarchy or in competencies or Uh, responsibilities could be different. The function could be different. But again, the idea is not to focu focus on that. The idea clearly is to have a technical pilot with, who is at the center of all these domains. So for example, here I mention a lot of different subjects, but we imagine that the fleet technical pilot could be at the center of the crew, all the guys in charge of documentation, configuration of the fleet, performance, the manufacturer, the maintenance engineering. So I will not detail this, but clearly the message here is that, okay, you have a position, you have a function, you have a hierarchy in your organization, but the role of the technical pilot is central and should be independent. I know it's difficult, but the idea is to be independent to be able to build a network with the different domains. <coughs> so now the main activities. Uh, you will see that it's, it's very vast. You can be involved in a lot of subjects, which we'll try here to summarize a bit what could be the main domains where you could be involved in. Before doing that, some of you may know that In Airbus, we provide guidelines on the role of technical pilot. It's very brief, but it exists in the Airline Operations Policy Manual. In this paragraph, 1.4, we uh, propose some responsibilities and duty of the flight operations personnel. And you have the description of the duty of the flight ops manager, the chief pilot, the chief cabin crew, and at the end, not clearly visible, but it exists, the technical pilot. So if you uh, search for gui guidelines, it exists. <coughs> and, and if you go further on this uh, AOPM, you will see that we propose some main activities relating to airworthiness, all uh, what is type certificate and delivery activities. I will detail this. Continued airworthiness. So this is a moment where you took delivery of an aircraft and you have to ensure that the aircraft is still safe and airworthy. And you have a lot of activities around uh, with maintenance. So uh, this is the part where you can be uh, involved. After the, uh, the part that you know uh, all by heart, this is the relation with the flight operations and training, all the product like the documentation, Uh, all the OEBs, uh, specific procedure, and all the communication with us, with Airbus. The performance. So here it's not, the, the deal is not to replace all the performance engineers, but it's to participate to some studies, ETOPS or uh, new airports, new terrains, and to be able to challenge their decision and to participate to the final decision. So a uh, very important part, the safety. So to be involved in the safety management system. We'll see uh, an example after. And also uh, to participate to special operations and projects. So it's all operations with uh, specific ATM procedures or uh, all the RNP procedures and even for the deployment of EFB. I know that some of you uh, were, as a technical pilot, were involved in the deployment of the EFB. So let's have a look more in, de uh, more in detail. The airworthiness. 
So when we manufacture an aircraft, uh, we have to uh, respect some regulations. And when we deliver the aircraft, it's up to you. Uh, as a technical pilot, you can be involved below the delivery to participate to some uh, uh, decision and to be part of the uh, design organization approval. And the example is this is the OSD. Now the OSD is part of the certification of the aircraft. And for MMEL, for example, you can be involved before the delivery, the delivery of the aircraft. The type certification of the aircraft and the individual type certificate of the aircraft you will take. And also all the organization of continuous airworthiness and all the support that you will have to ensure to, be sh to ensure that the aircraft is safe. So all the uh, organization to all the reporting to the airworthiness authorities, the reporting to Airbus and the link with Airbus. <coughs> so if you can summarize, this is something that is more linked to delivery activities. And uh, clearly the example is when you perform the first flight when you uh, take an aircraft uh, at the delivery center. Another part, continued airworthiness. As I told you, continued airworthiness, it's a, it's a name linked to airworthiness, but concretely, what, what does it mean? To ensure that the aircraft is still safe to fly. So this is, for example, when you have uh, an issue, uh, you have to release the aircraft into service. So you have a lot of documents uh, to pro to, of processes to respect. Uh, we can be involved with you to release aircraft in service. Uh, Lauren explained with the Adam, but you have other examples when you have to ferry fly the aircraft, for example. Another part is to uh, ensure that the aircraft configuration still respects the different mandates. Sometimes you have uh, some mandates that tells you that you have to replace some computers, equipment, or to apply some te temporary revision of the flight manual linked to some equipment. So uh, we explain in the course clearly how to know the aircraft configuration and how to better manage. Another part is to uh, reinforce the link with the maintenance engineering. This is a part that is very important. We believe that uh, it's really uh, important for the technical pilot to be uh, to have a strong link with the maintenance engineering uh, to solve some situations that could uh, last long hours because there is no coordination between the different services. Uh, for example, in uh, AOG or if you want to fly by the ferry fly the aircraft to take the decision to know what to do with the mechanics on site. Uh, which uh, pilots will be able to convey the aircraft, stuff like that. The work with Airbus Flight Operation. So uh, clearly the idea is to be able to participate to the management of the documentation and to communicate with us. Um, for example, uh, the management of the revision of the manuals. You know that it's a bit uh, tricky, so you have to be involved on that and to be our focal point on that, to be sure that you will correctly uh, manage the different revisions and all the information that we give to you. <coughs> it's possible uh, to do that, to communicate with us, with dedicated tools uh, like tech requests. This is something that entered into service uh, beginning of the year. So it's a bit different compared to the previous way of communication that we had. But if you can be the, the person in charge of tech request and being the same to ask some questions, uh, it could improve the communication with us. And for some WebEx, more technical, more related to specific subjects, uh, we invite you to participate as a technical pilot. And also you can be involved in customization uh, subjects like the customization from the MML to the MEL and other uh, documentation like the uh, FCOM and whatever, uh, all the documents. <coughs> and finally, you can participate to the deployment of EFB and when it's done, uh, you can participate to the evolution of the EFB and to manage all the 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 solutions that uh, we presented uh, uh, during this conference. 
So you see, w even if with Airbus flight operations, there are a lot of uh, subjects to cover and a lot of activities that are possible. Performance. Uh, so here the idea, as I told you, is just to perform some studies on specific cases. Uh, clearly, it's not here to review all the performance aspects of an aircraft and of your operation, but it's to be a able to participate to working groups when you want to open a new route, when you want to take a decision to optimize the fuel saving, for example, and to increase the awareness of specific subjects uh, that are given by the performance engineers and to pass the message to the crew community to better explain why we do this and why we do that. <coughs> Study cases specific on routes and as I told you, if you want to deploy ETOPS, uh, we think it's a good idea to participate to the discussion as a technical pilot. And of course, if you start to participate and you start to take decisions, you will be able to challenge the results and not to be uh, submitted to a decision from the performance engineer. Again, it's to break clearly the different walls that could exist become different domains, performance on one side and pilots on, one, on the other side. And finally, safety and special operation. So uh, clearly, when we talk about safety and safety management system, uh, we believe that it's more a link to the flight data analysis. We know that the flight data analysis are made by the safety departments, and sometimes they can see some uh, tendencies, some trends, to some events that could be uh, that could be uh, given to the management, for example reported to the management, and maybe we think it's a good idea to have a technical pilot between the management and the crew community to filter the message and to pass a good message. It's not because you had a red flag in the flight data analysis that uh, something went wrong. You have maybe to make the link to explain uh, if there was an operational situation that created this uh, famous flag in the FDA, some th uh, clearly to be uh, in the middle to smooth a bit the message. And uh, as uh, Julien explained yesterday, uh, you, can be, you can see that all special operations linked to RNP are difficult and involve a lot of knowledge. And uh, we believe that the technical pilot, uh, by reviewing all the technical aspects of our RNP approach and all the impact that it has on the operations, we believe it could be uh, important to have a technical pilot dealing with this kind of special operation. And finally, air traffic management. Uh, we have been talking for, for uh, a long of this subject. You know that we, can have, we will have some mandates on funds, for example. So uh, between the airworthiness authorities, the guy in charge of uh, retrofits and the guy in charge of operation, the, tec the technical pilot could participate to this specific subject involves technical aspects, but also operations, and also mandates, to again concentrate the information and to pass the message around. So to summarize what I told you, uh, the communication is key. And in fact, what we would like, it's not a dream, but we would like that you succeed in doing this, is to have a technical pilot that is the focal point for Airbus. That means that we try to uh, communicate with one guy identified as a technical pilot to again improve the communication between uh, you and us. And uh, how is it possible? It's if it's possible, if the technical pilot is also able, I know it's a lot of missions, but is also able to participate to some analysis of events between uh, you and us, so, for example, to receive the report, the report of incident, to participate some events, to some events like this, like this one, and the different seminars that we do, to be present when we perform uh, an operational liaison visit in your facilities, and again to be our, uh, our contact, the Airbus contact. And finally, to uh, be present and to 
be the, the guy behind the tech request tool. To be the guy who posts the questions and who receives the answers. Again, it's to bring some uh, added value, not to lose time in uh, communication, in, uh, in uh, receiving or uh, posting two or three times the same questions, something, uh, something like that. How is it possible? So again, it's with the daily exchanges, uh, with a specific communication. So we talked about WebEx, but uh, yesterday we talked about OTT and FOT, the operator training transmission and the flight operations transmission, and to be present on this visit, seminar, and conferences. So clearly here, the message is to say that you have to be a communicant in your airline, but you have also to communicate with us. And after that, you will close the loop. Now, I would like to invite Captain Oleg uh, to have uh, his testimonial of uh, his role on a technical pilot. Uh, so I told you that we have a course uh, in Toulouse, and uh, Captain Oleg was one of the first students we have. So I propose to have uh, his uh, testimonial through uh, some questions and... Uh, I hope that it will be valuable for information for you. So the first question, starting from the beginning. Oleg, um, did your airline plan to have a technical pilot before they started to operate? And if yes, what for? Okay. Uh, so first of all, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to say thank you for your boss and David to inviting for conference on testimony on event and back to the questions. Uh, yes, Airline had a plan which appeared in 2003 when actually Airline took a decision to join uh, Airbus fleet to change a fleet. And the initial functions of a technical pilot at that time it was to customize MEO, to cooperate and to establish communication with the flight ops department, engineering department and maintenance department, plus aircraft technical status monitoring and to conduct maintenance and check flight and acceptance flights in accordance with Airbus uh, manual. Thank you. Uh, second question. So uh, I explained that being a technical pilot uh, could be could s uh, significant uh, in terms of activities. So what are your main activities? So the main activities, as I mentioned, it's uh, four items that I have mentioned before. So it's MEO, CDO, customization, cooperation with the flight ops, maintenance and engineering departments, technical status monitoring by request of technical coordination center. You conduct the maintenance check flights after heavy maintenance, for example, after painting, after six year checks, or uh, after both engine removal. Plus, you communicate with Airbus during aircraft deliveries and redeliveries and technical data package. Uh, you working with the performance and uh, flight ops uh, specialist in your airlines for load and trim sheet, especially computerized load and trim sheet uh, check. Some work related to outlands to be sure that all the aircraft are properly working and capable of making outland and plus, it's huge work with engineering department on OEBs, modifications, and some aircraft configuration. For example, when you take a new aircraft which is coming into your fleet, stuff like narrow runway operation or maybe uh, different weight variant which requires immediate response and you have to request and new load sheets and stuff like this. Okay. No, next questions. So in your different domains of activities, your interaction with different domains, what are clearly the main challenges that you face every day? Actually, it's the most interesting question because there are two main challenges. Number one is the time. You usually have to do a lot of things during a short period of time. And the second one is, for example, new equipment. And on, as our airline just took a delivery of first A321, for example, it was a lot of challenges like new loaches, new MEL items, some procedures, uh, some internal documents, updates, and so on. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Another question. 
uh, we told you uh, yesterday when we talked about the course that, uh, of course, the role of the technical pilot could be a pilot, but we opened the course to senior flight ops engineer. So do you think that this position will be fulfilled by a pilot, or is it possible to have this role completed by a senior flight ops engineer? Yes, as a pilot, I do think so, that it uh, has to be fulfilled by a pilot, and there are a few reasons, because the main product of each airline is a flight. So a technical pilot is capable to support many airline departments. So you can work with engineering on OEBs modifications. You can work with the flight support and flight operation department, for example, on performance factor monitoring. You can work with <coughs> navigational databases, OER procedures, route study with maintenance department for maintenance check flight, acceptance flight, and uh, with the flight tops, so you take care of uh, revision management of all Airbus manuals. Plus, with the fleet planning department, if you have different uh, fleet, different configuration, you can suggest which aircraft, which configuration better for some type of operation, like high altitude operation, hot countries, uh, narrow runways, etc. Okay, thank you. And the most uh, interesting uh, question, so a lot of activities, and you say that you challenge, uh, one of the challenge was the time, but can you give us some figures? It's an interesting question, because we have to split the uh, role of technical pilot in two parts. So first one, regular operation, when you have a standard fleet, no any uh, ongoing maintenance check, and no any aircraft coming or leaving your fleet, so it would be, I would say, around eight days per month. And then another story, when you have a season of heavy maintenance, when you have deliveries and re-deliveries, so it might take you up to 15, sometimes more days per month, but again, it, it depends. Okay, so alpha months. <laughs> okay, so it's not so bad. <laughs> so you, you, you can... You uh, sometimes remain to fly, so it's okay. Um, I have an extra question for you. Um, so you attended to the, the course in Toulouse. Uh, can you tell us uh, what changed after this course? Uh, my feeling was very great after that course, and uh, the reason for it is the main advantage of the course because the course presented together with a number of specialists from different Airbus departments. You have a uh, specialist from flight data analysis department, from performance uh, department. You have test pilots. You have possibility to communicate with a flight ops engineer, flight test engineer. We had a great opportunity to visit aircraft delivery center, air tag center. We had a very interesting, useful uh, presentation on the PBN. You saw yesterday a, a Julian presentation, but... Uh, it was part of a course. It was a very nice presentation on a, a route study, oxygen escape routes, and uh, also very useful. Uh, it's OEBs. We had a chance to communicate, to have live communication with engineers working on OEB fixes, and it was a very useful introduction to initially worseness continuing air worsiness and the regulations for air worsiness and air operations. Thank you, Alex. So thank you for this testimonial. Thank you. <laughs> so now I propose to finish with an example, a concrete example uh, that... Uh, comes from a, uh, a recent subject that we had on uh, A380. So um, we recently issued a, a flight operator uh, transmission regarding an issue. And uh, you may know that the FOT are sent to the management of the flight operations. So the subject was... I will try to be uh, simple, but it's not the technical aspects that are important. This is the message behind. So the FOT was saying that you have to reset the engine interface power management and that you had an OEB and an associ associated uh, airplane flight manual temporary revision cancellation. 
and you had a release of a new airworthiness directive saying that you have to reset the equipment every 10 days. So it was briefly the content of the FOT. So you have to reset the equipment. Uh, you had to reset it through an OEB, and now you have to res reset it every 10 days. I will explain you after. In parallel, we sent an OIT. So the OIT is dedicated to the maintenance engineering, the head of maintenance and engineering of your airline. And the OIT was saying, okay, uh, it was the same subject. You had to reset the uh, EIPM. You had the release of a new AeroCS directive, and you have to reset the equipment at repetitive interval, maximum 10 days. And at the end, it was written that, so before you had an OEB to reset the equipment, but now it's not needed anymore, and so the OEB is cancelled. Are you able in a few seconds to summarize the situation? And this is the moment where we believe that the technical pilot is a superhero and is able to manage the situation and to summarize this and to debrief everybody. As a technical pilot, I would take, if I'm able to receive the FOT and the OIT because I am, I am in the center, in the network of all different domains, I'm able to summarize both documents saying something like that. Okay, we have an impact on global operations, maintenance and flight ops. Who does the reset at the end? If I analyze alone this situation, I will say, okay, this is a maintenance. What about the OEB? We had an OEB and now we, uh, Airbus explained that there is no more OEB. I confirm that there is no more OEB because it is written in the document. Maybe uh, clearly why in some documents but not on the others. And at the end, is there a corrective action? I have no OEB but I have to reset anyway. So what is a corrective action? Okay, it is a maintenance action. So it's not my business anymore because I am flight ops. But this is a maintenance action. And uh, that means that if I am in the center, if I am able to make the link as a technical pilot, I am able to manage this kind of situation. And you have dozens of this kind of situation. When the maintenance receives an information, the flight ops receives an information, and the other receives an information, someone should be able to synthesize the, inf the information. Uh, we think it's, it could be you as a technical pilot. So to conclude, as I repeated during this presentation, the technical pilot clearly is a link between your world of operations and the other domains. As I explained, no need to be an expert in all the domains. You have experts in your airline, but you have to communicate with them. And it is possible because you know the guys, you know the environment of your airline. And finally, to have a strong position and to be recognized by it's to have the uh, communication and to be established as an Airbus focal point. This is really important. And to finish, I, re I recall you that the main duty of the technical pilot is not only the technical aspect, it's also the communication. We have a course for that. We invite you to contact your key account manager if you want to discuss the course, or you can come to see me if you have any question of this course. Thank you. A320 Mentor Channel. Thanks for watching.